Hello students and welcome to the final video of this lesson. In this video, we're actually going to be going over several problems where the extreme value theorem may or may not be used in certain cases. So let's get started. So what we want to do first is looking at this interval, and this is going to be the same for across all three of these problems coming up. We just want to state if the extreme value theorem is or is not applicable on that interval. So what I want to do here is I want to think, all right, so on this first one for h, we're given uh, 3x plus 2 on x plus 3. And what I want to note is that this is actually going to be undefined when x equals negative 3, because then you're going to have division by 0. What I want you to think about is where that negative 3 exists. Negative 3 is going to exist in between negative 5 and 0 on our interval. So the extreme value theorem is not applicable because h of x is not continuous at x equals negative 3, which is in that interval. So moving ahead into our next problem, keep in mind that we do need to be very specific about where these functions are defined, okay? So looking here at g of x, you want to think about, okay, where is the square root of x minus 3 going to be defined? When you have any values less than 3, when, when x is less than, or no, just less than, so when x is less than 3, well, we're going to be having values in that square root that are going to be negative, and that's not going to be real numbers. So that's not going to be defined when x is less than 3. So again, we're looking at that interval between negative 5 and 0. So the extreme value theorem is not even going to be able to be applied in this case, again, for the same reason as before, but because g of x is not defined when x is less than 3. It's only defined when x is greater than or equal to 3. And now looking at our last bit here. So we're given f, which is the natural log of x plus 7. What you want to remember about logs is that within the log, if you have negative values, you're not actually able to take that log. So what is going to cause negative values here? Well, so when x is less than negative 7. But again, you want to think, what is the interval that we're worried about? So we're worried about the interval between negative 5 and 0. So in between negative 5 and 0, f of x is defined. And since it's a continuous function in between that interval from negative 5 to 0, the extreme value theorem will be able to get applied in this case. All right, so moving on where uh, we're actually going to need to take some of this into consideration, but we're going to be finding absolute maximums and minimums using the extreme value theorem. All right, so just note that we're going to be finding the y values in this case because we just want those values, not the exact coordinates. So just be clear about what you're talking about here. And um, if we can't find any absolute maximums and minimums because the extreme value theorem doesn't apply, we need to be able to state why. Just to note that in this first problem, you are going to want your calculator. So if you don't have that next to you, make sure you go and grab that. All right. So what we're doing here is in this first problem, again, we just want to state where those maximums and minimums are. So we're looking here in between negative one and positive three. So first we want to find f prime of x. So that's going to be 3x squared minus 4x minus 3. And we want to set this equal to 0. And we could use the quadratic formula or you could just graph it and solve for zeros or however you feel the most comfortable solving for zeros. But we're going to get x equal to negative 0 0.535 and x equals 1.869. And here's something I, I don't want students to ever get caught up in. is like, you're not always going to be using those. You want to think, do those two x values, do those two um, relative maximums or minimums, those relative extrema, do they occur in that given interval? And yes, in this case they do, but you always want to keep that in the back of the mind is do they actually occur in what we're actually looking at? Because it's not always going to be the case that they do. All right, but in this case, since they do, we're going to be making that little table, that little chart where we're making the comparisons. So you're going to include the endpoints at negative 1 and 3, and then you're going to find f of x at negative 0.535 and at 1.869. So let's kind of write that out. So we're going to be looking at f of negative 1. We're going to figure out what that's equal to. We're going to figure out f of negative 0.535, f of 1.869, 
and f of three, okay. So let's get what all of those are equal to. So go ahead and punch those into your calculator. All right, and that's what I have here in this case. So let's go ahead and compare here. So what is our absolute maximum? Well, our absolute maximum, and we're just getting the y values, our absolute maximum is negative 1.121. And our absolute minimum is going to be negative 8.065. And you, you have to write it, but you also have to show that table. You have to show this. If you don't show this work, and this was a free response question, then people are gonna wonder where you're getting your answers from. Because if you only look at these two and maybe they are the correct answers, but you never check the endpoints, then you're going to be losing points on that free response question because you're not doing all of the work that you need to do. All right, so now let's move on to our second problem here where we have some trig going on. So let's find our derivative. So g prime of x, so this one's gonna be a chain rule here. So I'm gonna get, let's see, so two sine x uh, times the derivative of sine x, which is gonna be cosine x plus, nope, minus sine x, and that's our given interval. So we want to set this equal to zero, but this can be factored. I can factor out sine of x from uh, both of those terms. So sine x times two cosine x minus one, and we're going to set that equal to zero. So sine of x equals zero, and when does two cosine x minus one equal zero? Okay, so solve for that here. So I got x equal to pi and x equal to five pi over three. I know there are other values on the unit circle where cosine of x will equal one half, uh, but they occur outside of the given interval from pi over two to two pi. So just keep that in mind that pi over three will not be one of those values that we're gonna be given. Um, so now what do we wanna do next? Well, from here, we're gonna be writing down our interval, not our interval, we're gonna be writing down that little table. So we want g of those endpoints, so g of pi over two. And then the next one's gonna be g of pi. We're gonna figure out what that's equal to. And then we want g of five pi over three, we'll figure out what that is equal to, and g of two pi, okay? So go ahead and calculate those values and compare them to mine in just a second. All right, so did you get the exact same values that I got here? Um, I really hope so. If you do need to go back and review your trig, make sure you do that, but those are essential skills to getting you through some of the calculus problems that are gonna pop up. And from here, the calculus is done, right? The algebra is done. There's some trigonometry in here, but it's not too, too bad in, in terms of trigonometry. And now we're able to write down the values of our absolute maximum and the values of our absolute minimum. So our absolute maximum here as I compare all those values is occurring at 1.25 and the absolute minimum is going to be negative one. So once you actually get all of these values here and you make your comparisons, then it's really straightforward. Just choose the maximum value and choose the minimum value. Okay, so now we're gonna move that into our third problem here. And we have x plus two to the two thirds. So what I'm gonna start with is f prime of x, and this is gonna be a chain rule, so bring that two thirds down, and I'm gonna get x plus two, two thirds minus one is um, negative one third, and then the derivative of the inside is just one, so I'm not gonna write that, but I am gonna rewrite this because I'm gonna get two over three times the cube root of x plus two. And what I wanna think about is we set this equal to zero, but it, we don't have any values where x is gonna be zero, but it is undefined when x is going to be equal to negative two, because if I get negative two plus two, I get zero, and then we're just divided by zero. So that, so that makes it undefined. And that does occur in our interval from negative three to six, so I do wanna to continue to note that. And so what we have here is we, we're gonna be able to write down those three values and make our comparisons. So we're gonna get f of negative three. We're gonna figure out what that is. We're gonna try to figure out what is f of negative two. And we're gonna get f of six. And we're gonna compare those three values. We know nothing is going to be either more or less than what's happening at those three values. So um, go ahead and get those values written down. 
And from here, you're able to write down, okay, what is the absolute max and what is the absolute minimum? Okay, so let's see. All right, or my maximum is going to be four and my minimum is going to be zero. So just once you get a little chart, a little table, you're able to make your comparisons and you can never forget those endpoints. And now we're gonna move into our final problem for h of x. And so we're looking on the log of x squared minus four on the interval from negative one to three. And anytime I have square roots or anytime I have logs, I'm trying to think about, all right, those are undefined. Or even when I have rational functions, there are, there are points where they can be undefined and where you can't take that derivative, where it's not continuous. So points where it's not continuous, we need to take into account. So I'm gonna think about this and I know that this is undefined for values on negative two to two. All right, and there are values in between negative two to two where this is undefined and that, and that is actually going to occur on our interval from negative one to three. So since it's not defined, since it's not continuous over the entire interval from negative one to three, go back to the, the extreme value theorem. It says four continuous functions. Since this is not a continuous function, the extreme value theorem will not apply on the interval from negative one to three because it's undefined. This function h of x is undefined on negative two to two. So now that we have that one figured out, you do want to just keep in the back of your mind where it's not defined on the interval, we're not going to be able to actually use the extreme value theorem. All right, but in a lot of other cases, you'll be able to apply the extreme value theorem effectively, okay? You just wanna keep in mind a lot of these nuances when it comes to a lot of these theorems. Next up, you have your practice, you have your homework to practice this out, the extreme value theorem. Don't forget the little nuances that we have here. Of course, if any of these problems didn't make sense or you didn't get the exact same values that I got in my problems, please let me know that you need help. I'm Mr. Hernandez. And this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.